Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. My father's house has many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I am going there to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you are going, so how can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you really know me, you will know my Father as well. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said, Lord, show us a Father and that will be enough for us. Jesus answered, don't you know me, Philip? Even after I have been among you for such a long time, anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Don't you believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words I say to you, I do not speak on my own authority. Rather, it is the Father living in me who is doing his work. Believe me when I say that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. Or at least believe on the evidence of the works themselves. Very truly I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing, and they will do even greater things than these, because I am going to the Father. And I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. You may ask me for anything in my name, and I will do it. Do you know Jesus? If your response is yes, then what is his response? you. What does it say in verse 12? Very truly I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works that I have been doing, and they will do even greater things than these, because I am going to the Father. Do you do these works? In our current circumstance today, are you meeting the challenge, or have you just buried yourself away? Is the Father in you and is he doing the works with you? And are you doing greater things than these? Christ says, and they will do even greater things than these because I'm going to the Father. Are you involved? Have you been praying for our current circumstances to be resolved? Have you started to get angry in yourself? Why should the world allow us to be like this when instead we should be overcoming all of this? Have you said enough is enough and that God's work and power should be in this world and we shouldn't be afflicted by these things? Do you know Christ, the Son of the living God, whose name is Jesus? Are you asking for a resolution in his name or are you silent and unbelieving? You know, there's so many people who need love and care at this time. There's so many people who need sympathy. There's so many people who need the balm of God's peace upon their lives because they've lost loved ones. Do these words tumble out of your mouth as you see these people, as you speak to these people, as you put your arms around these people? This world, as we know, holds no truth, and that means the people of it have become bankrupt morally. Our political system's morality has collapsed. Sexual morality has evaporated. Religious morality has become like a mist. The church has collapsed. And we know that our, in, within our current circumstance that we have seen this played out. We've allowed ourselves to become seduced by situation ethics, which is our modern way of thinking and living. The great laws of God have become a convenience and malleable because we have escaped the things that we do wrong because we've been sold a false grace. This means that we believe we can rewrite the laws of God. We can tell people not to commit adultery ordinarily, that they shouldn't kill ordinarily, that they shouldn't bear fault witness ordinarily, that they should not steal ordinarily. We believe that God's laws are no longer absolute. For we've been told we can get away with it, and generally many people do, and they face no consequences. Yet those who know God are supposed to be new creatures. They're supposed to be examples because they're adopted heirs and daughters of the Most High. Surely our morals and beliefs and actions and deeds should be so much higher than the world's. 
Why is it that we believe we can be disobedient with impunity and not suffer any consequences and because of the collapse of our morals or because we're not indwelt by Christ, we lack his power. We are unable to act as Christians. And this means that the church has become a laughingstock. Our society believes that and know that we are pointless, that we offer no truth or hope. We have no power over the world. Our existing circumstances show this. What, are we, what have we got to offer? What can we offer? Our world is struggling with a current crisis. But what does the church offer? The church this time has been given an opportunity to be a blessing to the world. But if you just look at our church websites, that our message boards, what are we really offering the outside world? Even in these restrictions, what are we providing? Yet is this is how we're supposed to be. The world is looking for a way. The world is looking for a hope. They're lost. They're bereft. They're alone. They aren't finding any. But are we offering any? Do you know Christ? Do you understand what he's saying to you in your life? Do you have his power? This is what he said to his disciples. I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Jesus said this with all the authority of heaven and earth upon him. I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Do you know and believe this? Are you following the way? If not, do you have a heart inside you that yearns, that is crying out, show me the way? I need you in my life. And my life needs to be better than it is. There has to be something more. I need transformation or education. Does your mind cry out for stability because of what you're seeing that is going on in this world? Is it seeking? Are you seeking? Are you asking? Show me the way. I'm afraid and I need hope. If you're lost, Jesus says, I am the way. No one else can lead you. He can show you. You cannot follow anyone else, for if you do, then they will disappoint you and you will be lost. Only Christ knows the way, for he says, I am the way. So no one else in history has been able to say this with authority and to give us a surety. The Bible, the New Testament, shows us in black and white our world's predicament. And God is the only one who provides us with the solution for our lives. We as a people have two states. We can be lost or saved. We as a people have two states. We can be empowered or powerless. We as a people have two states, loved or lonely. We as a people have two states of being afraid or at peace. Which are you? This world, you see, needs a people who are full of power. Needs a people who are saved, who are loved and no peace. Can you see Jesus? Are you able to follow his way? Jesus said, I am the way. For he came to seek the lost and he gave them the way so they can be found. And if you've been found, can you show others the way to be found? The way does not come from the world. We've been so indoctrinated. We are so programmed from a time of when we are children by the world. We have allowed ourselves to be lulled into a false sense of security. And that security the world offers us can let us down so easily. And there's so many people in that predicament right now. We can lose our peace of mind and we can be so full of fear. Yes, we can have education, but does that offer us the indwelling of Christ? Yes, we can have the trapping of success of the world, but does that offer us any hope? While we have education, while we've been given prosperity within the world and we have success and all of these are good things in themselves, do they ultimately offer us safety and security? You see, only Christ and his power can do this. When he is first and foremost in our lives, then we have peace and security and joy. This world has, has to learn this and I don't care if it doesn't like this. It may not acknowledge who or what Christ is in this way, for you see, there's no other way that it's possible or feasible or achievable or capable of knowing peace and of knowing God. While this may sound dogmatic and prejudiced, it's simply the truth. 
because no one else shrunk from eternity into a mother's womb. No one else was born and began a ministry which lasted three and a half years and then died upon a cross. No one else has sent his spirit into the world so that we might be transformed and that we can then accept him and his spirit so that we can be like him and do the things that he did and greater things. You see, only Christ fulfilled scripture's prophecy and then all the things that he did. So he's able to say what he can and has said, for there's no other way. Christ stands tall amongst us. He's standing here right before us right now and asking you, do you see the holes in my hands? Do you see the marks on my brow? Do you see the gaping hole in my side? He's not a stranger to death and betrayed. He understands it. He knows what we go through. And he's beckoning us, beckoning us to him. He's asking us, saying, follow me. Perhaps you've never bothered. Perhaps you've allowed yourselves to fall away if you once knew him. Perhaps you are following, but you need a greater indwelling. Well, this Jesus is saying, come to me. I am the one. Jesus saying, let me show you. Let me empower you. Let me find you if you're lost. Allow me to place my spirit inside you so that you might have the life that you deserve and desire. So that you might be sure and empowered. Allow me to do what is needed to be done so that you might be happy and content and know how heaven in your life. Allow me to turn you away from those things which you know are wrong in your life so that you would follow me, that you would experience light and love and peace and power and that the Lord Jesus would be a force to be reckoned with in your life. You may be doubtful but Jesus has certainty. You may have questions but Jesus has the answers. You may have been told that you're living a lie, but Jesus says he is the truth. You may have a loveless existence, but Jesus will give you love. You may feel that you're hopeless, but Jesus provides hope. You may feel that you have faith, no faith, but Jesus will build you up in faith. Why not follow Jesus? Why not come to him? Have certainty in this difficult time. Have the answers to the world's falsehoods. Allow yourself to shine and become the hope and love and joy that the world needs to see. For he's standing before you and desires to embrace you and for you to know him. And why not grasp his promise, which he has given us right here in our reading this day. And I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. You may ask me for anything in my name and I will do it. And let's pray together right now. Lord, we ask in your name that you will provide a vaccine in this world right now, today. And this vaccine, dear Lord, would be effective. And this vaccine would be a cure. And this vaccine, dear Lord, in your name, would allow us to be free in this world today. Amen.